heard uh, from Olivier about how we are designing products of the future, but you know, the design challenges right now facing the automotive industry uh, are just mounting. They're racing to get new vehicles, new features uh, to market, and the pressure on the design and manufacturing teams is intense. So we have a great story to tell you here today. We have a team from Honda North America who will show us how they use the 3D Experience platform to overcome the challenge of getting new products to market. Thank you, Ron. Thank you very much, Dean. Well, good morning. We're very excited to be here to share with you what we've been able to accomplish with um, increasing and continuing to grow our manufacturing simulation activities. I'm Ron Emerson, and these gentlemen to my left are Brian Wink and Brent Welsh, and they were the project leaders that helped to develop and lead the advancement of our activities for the two topics I'm going to be talking about today. We'll be around for the next couple of days, so if you guys have any questions, please stop us wherever you see us. We'll be more than happy to answer whatever questions that you have. Thanks, guys. I'll catch up to you shortly. So to get started about the manufacturing simulation activities that we've been having, um, I'll cover a few different topics. I want to give everybody a little bit of background on, on who Honda is. I've come, run into a few people over the years that don't exactly understand the scale of what we do. Then I'll cover our global manufacturing simulation activity, and then the two projects that I referred to earlier that these gentlemen led for the new model process development and the virtual factory activity. So who is Honda? Uh, Honda is a company that was founded in 1948 by Mr. Honda and Mr. Fujisawa. They founded the company and really wanted to do something different, a real good focus on quality and really trying to improve people's lives. In order to do that, they developed the Honda philosophy at the very outset. They decided, we've got to understand how do people work and how do we motivate people to deliver. It was really critical that they started with something called respect for the individual. This is critical to every associate's participation. The initiative, equality, and trust aspects of respect for the individual really help motivate every associate to do their best for a very innovative company. And Mr. Honda especially was way ahead of his time. An additional aspect of the Honda philosophy are the three joys. We really grasp these and use these every day. It may not be evident, but the joy of buying, selling, and creating are critical to everything that we do. Maybe some of it's obvious, like the joy of creating. There's obvious joy when you create something new. But buying and selling? Well, it's interesting to me because I find that almost day in and day out, I use that joy of selling whether it's selling an idea or a concept or even what I'm going to be talking about today as a new, I, new way to advance our company forward and increase the innovation. So these are really critical. And then the Honda Company principle. I won't read it for you, but the two items that stand out to me the most that people talk about a lot are the highest quality at a reasonable price. I run into people continuously in the street, in my job, in, in the workplace, in the malls that I visit, and people talk to me about, I want to tell you the story about my Honda. And they always talk about what a great value it is. So this helps focus us every day on what we do. Speaking of Honda, again, a lot of people don't know the breadth of the products that we deliver. So most people know about the cars. And for those of you who don't know, we also do make Acuras. We run into that question a lot too. But we also make motorcycles, robotics, marine engines, and the latest addition to the line is the Honda Jet, when it went up for sale just a few years ago. The sales that we've had were 28.3 million units in calendar year 2016 across the whole globe. But let's bring it back a little bit local now to here in North America. Product development, which is mostly what I'm going to be talking about, is evident throughout North America. We have a very strong R&D organization, a very capable manufacturing organization with many plants across Canada, the United States, and into Mexico. And of course, sales happen everywhere. Specifically, the North America product line are these here. Again, the Acuras and the Hondas across all the North America plants. And most of these products were actually developed here in North America with our manufacturing and our R&D organization, including the very exciting Acura NSX, which was developed and is manufactured in the state of Ohio. 
I can't talk about the history of Honda and what Honda's about without talking about the relationship that we've had with Deso Systems. It started many, many decades ago um, when we were just converting from 2D to 3D and we started using the Caddy product. Over the years, it's matured, and in the mid-2000s, we started using Delmia V5 for the global manufacturing system. We recently converted to Delmia V6 and have used that on the all-new 2018 Honda Accord. One of the projects uh, that I'm going to be talking to you about today is the NMPD, which is the new model process development. But it's been a very long partnership of working together to help innovate Honda and the Dassault products. Now to bring it really focused. So this is exactly my organization. We're called the Virtual Maturation Team. Our vision is to realize the full potential of the virtual methods to simulate the Gemba. Now, the Gemba is a word we use inside of Honda that means reality or at the spot. We want the simulation, the virtual world, to look exactly like our manufacturing situation for what we're doing. The picture you see in the middle is the actual production line. That's a CRV in mid-production uh, assembly state at our plant up in Canada. The virtual image we have on the left side is one of our more recent developments of putting the, the product in the context of the plant so we can verify all new model aspects of the vehicle. So this combined together is what you see on the far right logo, which is our vision logo that drives us every day in trying to simulate the Gemba or the actual spot. So let's talk about specifically where we are. Global manufacturing simulator starts with looking at the overall product development flow. Of course, product development goes from the early concept stage all the way through to customer delivery. But primarily today, we're going to talk about the middle section that we see just in the manufacturing verification area. This is where we've really pushed SO to innovate their tools so we can allow our innovative processes so we can do much more virtual verification. And this is especially important because Honda has switched from strictly physical verification to primarily digital verification. It's enhanced our time to market, and it's also enhanced our productivity. So in our world, we call this the global manufacturing simulator. We've got the new model process development, which is primarily looking at the process, how the vehicle is put together. We have to document that. And at the same time, we're trying to simulate the equipment that we use in our activities. This all feeds into the virtual confirmation build. And although I won't go into the details of explaining it today, we have a, a tool we call the issue management system, which holds all of our requirements, all of our assessments, and all of our gap items that we feed back. Graphically, it looks like this. On the 3D experience platform, of course, we have the product data that comes primarily from CATIA. The process I'll talk about in just a moment is critical, and we've integrated that into the platform as well. And then the resource is where I'm going to talk about virtual factory in just a moment. Then it all comes together in the virtual build, where we actually go through a production sequence step by step to make sure the car can actually be built as planned and as designed. So what have we achieved today? This is before our changes. On the left side, we bring together the product process and the resource in the manufacturing bill of material. We can see any vehicle, any variation of that vehicle, the specific plant contents, and the specific plant resources. This is really critical because we have to be simulating the actual spot. All Honda plants are different, so this becomes a really big task for us. And how that's visualized in the image on the right is the product sequence, the buildup, the actual carrier at the plant, and that is a position uh, car body 50, and all the all of the parts that are supposed to be on that car at that particular build location. So it's exactly what we're trying to do, but we weren't satisfied. So we kept moving forward, and again, this is where we began to challenge Desso to accomplish greater things. We started with the new model process development. We had a legacy tool that was only text-based. It was really a valuable tool for our process engineer for what we had at the time, but we couldn't take advantage of the 3D data that was being generated by R&D. We couldn't take advantage of all of the data that came along with that. And it was really hard for the process planners to visualize what they were assembling, because they were just typing in part numbers and typing in a process sequence. 
So we said, we've got a challenge, so let's come up with a better tool. We had a long laundry list of must items. We had to use the 3D data. It had to be fast. If we're going to visualize and look at the 3D data, it can't be very slow as it could be by loading all of the CATIA data, which is heavy, important, but we didn't need all that math data in this environment. And most of all, the bottom one has to be simple. It has to be simple. So we worked very, very hard with Dassault over about a year and a half, two years, and we really developed a great product. We can pull all of the product process and resource data in, just as we did before, from the legacy system as a starting point. Then the process engineers go in and make all of their changes, and then we can quickly understand the part consumption. This is critical to make sure that we don't forget any parts in the overall process. And again, this is done for every variation of the vehicle. The orange colored parts in that picture are the ones that have not yet been consumed. So it's very easy for the process engineer to understand, oh, I got to have to apply, apply that part. Once the part is applied to the sequence, now we can plan the sequence time and all of the requirements that go along with that. It's really critical that they put in the time so that they can do all the necessary balancing of all of the time across the whole process line, or at least within the work cell. Of course, then at the end, they can confirm the final assembly sequence by seeing the images, again, in proper color, very easy to understand. I now have consumed all the parts in that particular step. While I was talking about simple, this is some of the ways that we worked really hard with Dezo to make this simple. I think sometimes tools can be clunky, but we made it really good. To assign the part to the process sequence, it's drag and drop. It's super easy. Our process engineers are very excited about using this, and they just started using it on one of our develop models in development right now. But you just drag and drop it into the process sequence. Then you can interrogate the process step, and it highlights that part. It says, yes, that's the right part that I meant to put in there. So it's very visual and very easy. On the right side, we know process changes. We have to move things around. And that's also drag and drop, cut and paste. It's very easy to cut it, drop it in, and it's very easy to move forward. And all of the process sequence uh, balancing from a time perspective adjust accordingly. It's very smart. So we were, we were able to achieve all of our musts, and we have a lot of benefits by making this very valuable to our process engineers. It's very simple. And most of all, it's very quick with the nav reps, the very, very lightweight data that we could uh, create in order to make it very visual and very easy to turn around. So that's the planning structure app that we worked on. Now virtual factory. Virtual factory means a lot of different things to a lot of people, so let me put it in context. Our goals were to create a building in 3D to further advance us and to simulate the Gimba. We really wanted to see the product and the resource together in the context of the plant. Again, this is especially important because all of Honda's plants are different by design. So we put 3D plant layout at the center of it all, and everything around that feeds on what we've been able to accomplish. There were some items that were out of scope, but we realized that there's opportunity for robotics and logistics on into the future. Especially challenging was some of, that our, some of our sites were more than 30 years old. So we didn't have any legacy data we could pull up. It was all 2D drawings way back then. So it had to, again, be very simple. So we created a strategy. In the virtual build context, in the upper right corner of that top image, uh, it's circled around resource. So that's the per part what I'm talking about now. We have a strategy from the model to the layout program all the way up to simulation. This is what we want to accomplish. Again, to keep it in the context of the plant. What you see in the bottom center area is the virtual build context. That's what I showed you before. That's where we are. The images going up and to the right are what we've created and are continuing to enhance. So we had to start with building the plant. As I mentioned, we all only had 2D data. We don't have any 3D data history where we can uh, rely on. So we had to build the basic foundation of the plant. So we worked with an architectural engineering construction application to actually bring the plant into context. It's a very simple way to construct the plant and model it. So we have the columns, the floor, the slabs, and especially the pits are important because there's a lot of holes, if you will, in the, in the floor where the equipment has to sit down into. So we had to be able to model that with a great precision. Beyond that, now we have to do conveyor simulation. 
This is really critical for us to understand how the product moves through the plant in its various buildup states. So we work very closely with the SO in order to understand how to model it, how to program it so that we can get the logic to work correctly as well. The slat conveyor uh, was a particular challenge, and we worked really hard, and we were able to take a system that took days to model down to less than an hour. Again, working really hard to understand what parameters actually control this. So I've got a short video that I'll run through that'll demonstrate all of this activity. We're going to zoom in, like we did earlier, all the way up to our plant up in Canada that produces the CRV. So here you can start to see the basics of the modeling. So here's the, the floor structure. The reference grid was critical so that we could align all of the different components that we pulled together. There's the floor, and the pits are added so we can set our equipment in there. And now you can start to see the, the steel structure portion. So that building framework is complete. This is the actual instrument panel line. And now connect that to the modeling. This is where we're really focusing to improve the accuracy and make sure that it matches reality. So we've got the kinematics of the modeling in there for the fixturing that the associates have to move up and down to do the assembly work. We've got the conveyance systems. You can look at the local areas. And then finally, at the entire work area in context. And you can see all the logistics uh, containers around that where we can expand that further into the future. Now going to the main line. We don't actually move this fast, but we're pretty fast. We're able to simulate what is it going to look like. And this is great as much as Honda likes to move models from plant to plant. It's really an easy way for us to verify, can we put this model in that plant as well it can, as can it basically move through the plant. In this, in this section, what's really critical is we've connected that new model process development piece I talked about earlier with the visual connection. So the process is in the lower right corner. And now we can see that process actually in action and happening on the line. This, is, this part is still in development, but we work really hard with the SOAD in order to make all of this connected, because what good is a platform if you can't reuse the data across the various tools that you need in order to actually innovate? So we've had a lot of benefits from the virtual factory activity. It's reflecting the actual manufacturing plant condition. This was critical in what we wanted to accomplish. And of course, we're laying the groundwork as we continue to enhance and develop this area for future activities. You can imagine the logistics and the, the carts running around inside the plant to simulate that and find the optimum delivery routes, for example. So in summary, we've accomplished a lot. But specifically, realize the full potential of the virtual methods to simulate the Gemba. We've got to understand that actual situation. So we developed with the SO, working very closely together, the new planning structure capability. That's the, the process aspect. The plant structure integration using the AEC application in order to bring the plant context into the Delmia app. Through all of the cooperation and the teamwork between Honda and SO Systems, Honda's achieving our simulate the Gemba vision using the 3DX tools. That's all I have for you today. Again, Brian, Brent, and myself will be around for a couple of days if anybody has any questions. Thank you for your time and attention.